Mog and me were sweethearts since we were lumpers together, gracing on the silver sands or romping through the heather. But when once is grown up, their minds is grown too. And often enough for seeing things from different points of view. So, Marg and me had a little fallout. I'm forgetting what it was all about, but off she goes with some frit like another that never should have been read at the mother. And all he done to make me jealous, and it did. For I longed and I sighed like a bellers. And off we made too, and feeling that slackly, seeing everything mortal black and cussed <coughs> with anything that came in me track, wishing and wishing that Mar could come back. That's the far I went so late to put a sight on the wishing gate. The wishing gate is up at the Falloon, where all your wishing is bound to come true. And whether it's Barnet, whether it's not, Mog, village fiend, is the woman I've got. Well, I was coming back, and brooding and brooding, past an old thought of Jackie Hoon, Pete's cottage, the saying himself was calling it, but age and the weather's doing on it and falling it. Well, I hadn't gone far from the water trough. It's like if you say I'm a tootin' a boy bark, but fear stopped me broodin', and up I slowed, for I wanna at all like him that owl Douglas road. I often heard tell, all checked in the breath, of Betsy Julian. <laughs> and I couldn't go on another step further toward the road of that horrible murder for the bridge below was as black as tar where them big shady beech trees are. And out of the blackness, something was coming, looking mortal like the form of a woman, and carrying something in her hands that was looking like Betsy Crow's milk cans. <laughs> and here, this thing was coming and coming, my legs all feeling a, a sort of numb. And then the hair on my head stood up like a comb, for instead of taking her own road home, on she was coming straight for me. Frankie, oh God, I gripped out of a tree. <laughs> when she got level and stood like a stook, every joint in my body shook. Oh, I fairly took the wind out of me, but I. Slipped to the ground and I let go of the tree. <laughs> At last, though, she shouted, Ha ha, you boy, Bach, thou better be putting Calte in thy jar. Thou be sad to lie in the hedge all the night if thou can't go to Ramsay without getting tight. If I wash thy woman, I'd give thee skelter. It's not under my roof, thou be finding shelter. Get over that, you drunken trouse. You haven't got the spunk of a louse, and here's me with the upsters. Just broke with a load, and thy legs won't carry thou self on the road. <laughs> I couldn't say nothing. Just sit still while her tongue went on like the clap of a mill. If I tell her, I took her for Betsy Crow, she might, oh well, you never know, but <laughs> I'm thinking she was just as frightened as me, or she'd never let her tongue go so free for the joushing. She jawed all the time she was gone, and away in the distance I could hear her jawing, just like a thunderstorm passing away. But leaving me brain, as clear as the day. <laughs> <laughs>